Clutch Simulations. What's going on guys? Clutch here. Welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we're going to be talking about probably one of my favorite mods for Farming Simulator, period. That is Seasons. Guys, Seasons 19, it's been out for about a month for PC, a little less than that actually. We've had some time to dive in and take a look at all that Seasons has to offer, what's different from Seasons 17 to 19, and you know what, it's time to discuss and look at all the different options. Now, currently, PC, it's only available for PC, of course. Com coming to console soon, we don't have any time frames yet, all we know is that it's in testing for console. Hopefully, it makes it out to console soon. However, right now it's just for PC, so consider it as a primer if you're on console. Of course, if you're on PC, you probably had a chance to test this out a little bit. If not, well, let's take a look and see all that Seasons has to offer, shall we? So what exactly does Seasons do to your game? Well, the Seasons mod, guys, it's going to give you a cycle for your game. No longer will you be able to just choose when you want to plant and when you want to harvest. And uh, yeah, you'll have to actually follow a certain cycle, which is actually very cool. So real world farming kind of come into life here. So you'll start in early spring, you'll work through summer, go to the fall, and then try to survive the winter is what it's going to come up. Now, you each, uh, each of these different seasons, of course, well, you'll be doing certain different things. Typically in spring, you're going to want to do some plowing, cultivating, and probably seeding. Come the summer, maybe some weeding, fertilizing, uh, maybe some grass cutting and baling, and then come the fall, well, of course, you're going to be doing harvesting in the fall, maybe a little plowing, getting things ready for the next year. And finally, in the winter, well, that's really what you got to try to stay alive. But you're going to be doing some forestry, vehicle maintenance, and, well, tending to your animals if you have any. So that's kind of what you're going to be expected to do in each of those seasons. Now, what else changes with the Seasons game mod? Well, number one, daylight. Right now, well, it's about 9 o'clock, 8, 8 o'clock in-game. Your daylight in-game in, in uh, different seasons will change. So in winter, you may get only 8 hours of sunlight, where in the summer, you'll be up to like 17. It really depends on a couple of things there. But your daylights will change. The amount of daylight you get in a day will completely change. As well, weather will also influence your crops. Now, planting too early, too, too late. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the weather itself. But weather changes. Year to year, it's not the same every single year. There is a certain area where it will land. But some years, you may have more rain. Some years, you may have a drought. It really depends on, well, what the season is telling it to do. So you have to kind of adapt and work on the fly. It will change every year. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the menu. But just be aware that that's one other change that's going to be coming at you. Also, seasons does change the way grass behaves. We'll be doing a whole video just dedicated to grass and dealing with it in seasons. So just be aware of that. It does change quite considerably. And probably biggest of all, guys, all your animals are changing as well. We don't have any animals in front of us here, but all your animals change. We're going to be doing videos on that as well. But just be aware that is probably one of the biggest things to seasons other than, well, just the way the game works. But the, your animals will be uh, completely different from what you've expected in regular Farm Sim 19. All right, well, let's take a quick look at our on-screen display. If we look at our top right-hand corner there, you can see that things have changed a little bit from base game. Now, we also have, of course, the weather, what it currently is, it's overcast. But we also, beside that, we have some temperatures. Now, I'm in Celsius. We're in Europe on Felsburn, of course. And you can see there, it's 2 degrees Celsius. That is our ambient air temperature. Below that, we have our ground temperature, which is 4 degrees Celsius. It's actually warmer than our air temperature. Beside that on the right, well, you can see it's spring. Uh, the flower means it's spring. There's a couple different symbols in that. We can discuss that at a later date. But, 01, early spring. So we are in early spring. This is the first day of spring. Now, I said we had four different seasons, obviously. Spring, summer, autumn, and fall, or autumn and winter. Each of those seasons has three different segments. We have early, mid, and late. So spring right now is early. We have to wait to get to mid and late spring before it goes to summer. So our minimum season will be three days. It goes up to, I believe, 24 days is the, the largest we go up to. But we're going to look at the settings in a second. But let's dive into our main menu now. So when you first open up your season's menu, you're going to be greeted with the calendar, guys. This is the calendar, the main calendar. You're going to be spending a little bit of time here for sure looking at well, when you can plant certain crops and when they are ready to be harvested. Now, first things you're going to be looking at, you've got, well, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Those are your three seasons. And like I said, each one is broken up into three different segments. And depending on in your game setup, right now we're on a nine-day season. So they're going to be broken up into three days for each one for me right now. They could be one day, it could be a three-day season, or it could go up to a 24-day season, which would be nine days per, eight days, sorry, eight days per 
uh, per segment of the season. Wow, a lot of seasons going on here. Um, as well down here, you're going to find each one of the greens that are available on your current map. Now this does support multi-fruit, we'll talk about that briefly in a second, and a little bit more on how that works. Um, and then across the menu here, you're going to find out when each of these crops can be planted, and yellow is when it can be harvested. Now, for wheat, for example, spring, we want to plant, land of summer, and into fall, we can, we can harvest. Now down on the side here, you've got uh, germination temperatures. So these are temperatures at which the seed will germinate and the crop will begin to grow. So this is the ground temperature, not the air temperature. Make sure you look at that properly. But you can plant before you get to these temperatures. For instance, right now we're at four degrees, so none of our crops can be planted or can be germinated, I should say. We could plant, and once the ground temperature got to that five degrees, then it would become germinated and would become would start to grow. So that is always an option, guys. Don't look at this and say, I can't plant. You can plant, it just it won't start growing until it gets above that temperature. Now you may notice on this one as well, we have cotton with nothing as well as sugarcane with nothing. That is because the base game Geo, where it's taking its data for its forecast, is based out of southern England, southern UK. So the temperature for the ground is not suitable for cotton or for, uh, for sugarcane, it wouldn't grow there. So those two crops are not available with that. Now, there are other mods, there are add-on mods that will give you the correct forecast and for, uh, correct weather model for areas where cotton and sugarcane would grow. You just download those similar to how you put in seasons in your game and then you will have that as an option. So that does change it. Now, if you happen to have a multi-fruit map, you will find that they will show up at the bottom, all the other fruits. And as of right now, at least, they just take on the, uh, the base season for barley and wheat. So the exact same planting schedule as barley and wheat have. That's what you can expect to find with the multigrain. Our next menu is the weather forecast. Now, the interesting thing about this, you can see we've got several days, but we're down to the every couple of hours for the next 24 hours. So today from six till midnight, and then a little bit of Tuesday till 9 a.m. Now, after that, you start just going in generalized days. Now, the longer out the forecast, you can see here forecast uncertainty increases with time. So the longer out we get, the less certain we are that, well, that we're gonna get rain on Saturday. That's not a guarantee anymore. That's just kind of what they think is gonna happen. That's kind of generally what we're gonna see. This could change as it gets closer in. Now, for the next 24 hours, that's probably gonna be fairly accurate. So just be aware of that. Now you can see you've got maximum temperatures, average temperatures, minimum, minimum temperatures, give you an idea of what's gonna happen. At least with the air temperature, of course, that's not your ground temperature, that's your air temperature. Uh, if you're going to be getting in a rain, you can see how much, what the percentage chance is. So you can see on Wednesday, we've got an 80% chance right now of getting some rain. And they're thinking it's going to be around 12 millimeters earlier in that day. All right. And down at the bottom, we've got our wind speeds, average wind speeds for that area. And then the drying potential. Now, this is more to do with grass and hay. But you can see here, there's a, it's not a chance right now. Things aren't drying less of a chance and then more of a chance with the pluses here. So that is your weather forecast. Just be aware, like I said, guys, there's uncertainty with this. This is just a general guideline, especially later on in the week, the last 24 hours though, you should have a pretty good idea. So if you see rain coming, you need to get a field off of a, a crop off a field. Well, make sure you check this to see if you have time to get it off before it starts to rain. So let's move on now. Our next menu is the crop info menu. Now this menu, there's nothing you can really do here. Just like your forecast, but it gives you an idea of how resilient your crops are to certain types of issues you may run into, such as frost and drought. Now, like I said, year to year, season to season, things are going to change in your game. It's not gonna be always the same weather, things will change. Some springs you may have a very rough time and a lot of frost will come in. And if that is the case, if you check your forecast and you see, well, at seed, my I'm, I'm planting something that has a very low uh, tolerance to, to frost, maybe I should change that up and go with something with it's a little bit more adaptable. Same with later on uh, for drought, if you see it's going to be a very hot year, you may want to look and changing your crops up depending on which one is more resilient to take care of a, a drought rather than going with something that potentially early on in your in your season may have a problem with it. So just be aware of that. This is what this tells you. I would take a look at your forecast at the start of the year and kind of get an idea of what you may have to deal with. But of course, once you have it planted, there's not much you can do anyways. And since we are talking about your crop info, just be aware that it does not mean your entire crop will be damaged or destroyed because of frost or drought. You're just going to find that you're going to have certain patches, certain areas in your crop that may wither because of this. And you'll find you'll have a patchy crop. Some will be withered, some will still be fine. 
it's just dependent. Now the whole crop will be somewhat checked for this and there's a way to take a look if you walk around your crop and just discover if you're having an issue with certain areas. There's not much you can do about it, mind you, but there is a tool that'll look at that and you'll still be able to get your crop. So you may just lose certain patches thanks to frost or drought. Our next screen is the economy screen. And this here is the screen that looks at all your different crops and will give you a better idea or the best idea of when you should be selling these crops once you have them stored. Now, right now, since we're in a very fresh, brand new game, this is just historical data. As you can see our wheat, here's our, our average prices for our crops. As we scroll down, this is going to change depending on the crop. Now, once we start selling this and the game progresses, we go through a couple of years, you're going to see this, these typically will change. They will always be the same, but this is just the historical data for this. Now, obviously this is not going to change. You're not gonna get specific numbers out of this. You'll have to go to your main menu and look at the different sell points and get exact numbers for this. But this is just historical data to give you an idea on when it is the best time to sell certain crops. Now, some are very obvious. For instance, wood chips here, obviously winter, that's the best time to sell these. If we go to something such as wheat even, it's a little less obvious. I mean, you probably don't wanna sell in the middle of summer, but even early spring, is still not a bad time to sell the product comparatively. So just be aware, this is something to take a look at, figure out when the best time to sell your crop will be. Our next menu is the crop rotation planner. Now we have four different options for four different fields right here. Now to begin with, you're gonna start off with a crop that is fallow. So that is something that has nothing on it. So this is like a rest year, essentially. You're considering that crop or that field was rested for one year. Then we can place down what we wanna plant in it and figure out what our multiplier will be for the expected yield of that crop. So if we went with wheat after fallow, we'd have a 1.14 multiplier on top of our average wheat. Then we can go down to the next one, our next season. While we did wheat again, you can see it would drop down to 0.95. Well, what, what can we do to get that up? Well, we could plant cotton and all of a sudden, now it's up to 1.20. So cotton would be a great one to follow wheat. And if we just went cotton, follow wheat, cotton, follow wheat, everything would stay at 1.2 times multiplier, which would be a fantastic multiplier to have. That's the most you can get right there. So we can go through each of our different fields and we can check and find out which would be the best rotation to have for our crops. Now, if you select like none, that just means it's ignored and we're considering it just going to go right up to the top again and go back to fallow. So if this were, for this specific one, we'd have fallow, wheat, cotton, fallow, wheat, cotton. Now, if we added another crop down here, such as barley, or if we had one that was a little less, ah, there we go, cotton would be less again, sugar cane. Then it would go down to sugarcane, follow, and so on and so forth. So that is how the crop rotation planner works. And our last menu available is just the settings. So temperature, Fahrenheit, Celsius. Seasons introductions, that's just your menu options. Season length is an interesting one. So for instance, right now we are running a nine day seasons, like I said, we can easily change that right now to three days. Go back in, you can see here, we just have three days. Now each day it's going to change the section of spring. So mid, or sorry, early, mid, late. If we go back to our nine days or 12 days, doesn't matter there, but early, mid, late, you can see one to three days, four to six days and seven to nine now. So that's how that's going to change. And we can go all the way up to, I think it's 24. Is that right? Yeah, 24 days. And that makes eight day season or eight day segments in each season. If we move on down, crop moisture, that is something here we have to take into account. So this will disable threshing when crops have an excess amount of moisture. So if your crops are still wet from a recent rainfall, you will not be able to harvest them. Snow tracks, I think that's fairly self-explanatory. And snow mode, of course, snow will fall in cold winter on and block potentially block roads for you. So that there is the settings menu. All right, guys, and the last thing I want to talk about, well, it is the MT9. Now, the MT9 is a small little tool. You can see down at the end here, you're going to find that in the miscellaneous section of your store. And it's for measuring information on crops, bales, all sorts of different things. So let's take a quick look at that. We bring it up by using it, uh, by using our button for our chainsaw, whatever that is for you. And it comes up just like your chainsaw would. And from here, we can activate it. And depending on what we're looking at, before we go to this crop here, we're going to get some information. There we go. So the top one we're looking at, that's our location, our elevation, the crop or uh, fruit that's planted on this piece of ground. This here is the crop height. We're at 0% because it's been harvested, of course. Down here is a crop moisture. Uh, this caps at 25%, which is fully moist. Just be aware of that. Fertilization level and ground wetness. Now the ground wetness one is especially useful if you're looking to harvest. Like I said, we just got some rain here right now, it looks like. So that 
that we would not be able to harvest this if this crop was ready to be harvested. It's at 25% with the settings we currently have on. This has to be below 20. So that is an interesting one to keep an eye on because we wouldn't be able to harvest it. Just be aware of that. If we go to our grass, this will do the same thing, only we will not get this fertilization. We don't get the fertilization because this isn't an actual field. This is just grass. So this will also work on trees. We can find some information on trees. It'll work on pallets. We can find information on how much volume of product is still in a pallet, uh, usable volume. Uh, and it will also work on bales to see how much they fermented and how much is left of the bale. So a very handy tool, definitely worthwhile picking up. And just a final thought, guys, if you are on PC, you're going to want to make sure that you're not running any mods that can manipulate weather, manipulate growth, or change the animals in games because seasons will have an issue with that as well. Uh, also, prices to your fruit changes to that uh, prices to your economy. That will have an issue as well. If you're on console, that's something you're probably not going to need to worry about as that's handled by giants. But if you're on PC and you decide to install any of those mods, that will cause an issue with season. Just be aware of that. Anyways, guys, that is our first video today of seasons. So we've taken a look at just kind of the introduction to the menu system and kind of how it runs. We're going to be diving in a little bit more in depth to specific items and seasons. But if you do have any questions on any of the stuff we've covered already, drop them down in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you, of course. And of course, if you're enjoying this, this series, drop a like. And don't forget to subscribe to be caught up to date on, well, all things seasons right now. We'll be going through the rest of this stuff in the very near future. Or maybe by the time you're watching this, it's already out. So anyways, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day. And we'll talk to you next time. This is Clutch. Over and out.